working, pal. Uh, our friend Chris Biederman, uh, Biederman did a uh, had an article on the uh, the A's coming to Sacramento and the ticketing and all that. Now we talked last week about that graphic that last dive bar put out, and uh, it turns out it was pretty accurate. It just wasn't put out by the team, but we knew that. And Biederman actually referenced that in his article. So the premium seating options are now being sold and he got some more specifics. So the most sought after seats closest to home plate sold out in two weeks, according to a source who had knowledge of the sales, but was not authorized to speak. So this is going to be an A slash King source. Certainly. The, and, and, and by the way, I, none of what I'm about to say is any way, shape or form a knock on Biederman's reporting. He did a fantastic job. I right. just, the most sought after seats closest to home plate sold out in two weeks. Is that four? Hmm. Is that the two behind home plate? Is that the is that Vivek seats? Mm -hmm. Is that I don't I don't right. I don't you know need no context. Yeah, yeah, no context. The cost of the seats was not disclosed, but the other premium seats are, as we said last week, expected to cost between fifteen and twenty thousand per seat each season, or about one hundred eighty three to two hundred forty four dollars per game now just for a comparison the average there between 183 and 244 the la dodgers had the most expensive average season ticket price in base in baseball last year this year i should say at 209 dollars per game and the average there is 183 to 244 now context the dodgers have a huge stadium that's the average season so that factors in like the the nosebleed of nosebleeds and every seat all together i would not expect i mean we'll see but if the average cost of these premium seats is 183 to 244 per game for for the a's i would really not expect them to be near the dodgers when it comes to average prices overall but but they are they are right now yeah um what else do I have here? Uh, did, 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 okay, what's included? We talked about this. Parking, food, beverage, and access to the recently renovated premium areas, the Solon Club, Legacy Club, and Gilt Edge Club will be accessible for premium ticket holders. Now, they're only being sold in person with roughly 10 to 12 being sold per day. That's the 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 horseshoe between third and first base we talked about last week. Now I, I've had questions about this. I know we talked about this last week too. When it says food and beverage, I don't, and by the way, I don't know this. I can't imagine alcohol. Is I'd be surprised. I, I, I think we're talking hot dogs and sodas and waters and stuff. The premium plan again, the, the info was right last week requires a three year commitment, but standard tickets will not according to that person. So the first phase are these like super close, seats and then the, the the bottom horseshoe the second phase which they have no date set for uh, at least publicly is going to be you know all the all the tickets right the third phase is going to be luxury suite sales that will go on sale uh, after the traditional tickets which is phase two those prices we don't know anything yet on those um but we also know that construction is already started on the river cats home clubhouse the batting cages the weight rooms uh the home clubhouse will serve as the visiting clubhouse for a's games there will also be an upgraded press box broadcast booths and lighting to go with the artificial turf first regular season game march 31st against the cubbies um and again just Biederman re uh re mm -hmm. reiterating here that uh, they will not play River Cats and, and A's on the same day uh, at any point. They will alternate home and away dates uh, or right. each be on the road. AAA teams play six-game series lasting a week with days off on Monday to accommodate travel. So that'll that'll help them share the ballpark. So that's a lot of stuff. Um, I'm I'm really curious. I, I I'm curious like everybody else. Where when are they going to release? the the regular ticket yeah and how are those going to sell and then ultimately will they if it's not a three year commitment will they sell out I think they probably will yeah again I I mean as painful as it might be to the pocketbook I think the three year 
deal is smart on their behalf because I think once you again, I think we're going to be we said this before, but after year one, maybe year two, especially if at some point in that window, they will know like they are going to Vegas. Like, right. It's, it's signed. It's agreed. This is happening or not. But let's assume it does. Then I think if you're continually winning 70 games and it's year two and a half to year three and you're going, yeah, the tickets are sold. But mm -hmm. in the 14, 17,000 seat, you know, there's 11,000. A lot of empty fans. 000, you know, whatever it is. And a lot of the fans going as empty yeah, seats. It's 108 today. Yeah, I'm not going to go today. And that's kind of where and, – and I, I still also want to find out, too, if they're going to – I'd be – they probably won't. But how do you not have, like, a, a super season ticket? Where like, okay, your ticket gets you these seats mm -hmm. to every A's and River Cats game. And like, Kings. And that yeah. would actually yeah. be dope. Um, cause I because I do agree with you, Jason. I, I think that's a big ask to go and sit for three. And there's some people that are fine with doing that. Mm -hmm. But I think the populace going and sitting in the outdoors for three and a half to four hours every you know, every day this summer, damn near, uh, to ultimately watch a i mean that's really what their marketing kind of is is come watch other major league baseball players play in sacramento yeah and it's like apply that to the kings like what if it was like hey we know we suck hmm. and we know that there's really no chance of us not sucking unless we just catch lightning in a bottle randomly but you can see dame lillard and Giannis and nicole Jokic right here in sacramento I think I would do really well the first year. But the other part of that is that just like with the Kings, they could go to Oakland and see the Warriors. Well, you've got both Oakland and San Francisco that people have gone to for years. Right. I just, again, I, I hope, I truly do hope I'm wrong. I think they're severely overestimating the appetite for A's baseball in Sacramento. And I think the the attendance and the tickets and all that, I think it's going to be fine the first year. I do. I think first year is going to actually be really good, really cool, really cool attendance wise and all that stuff. But man, I just, what if the team is this team next year? Like there's no reason to think they're not going to be right. But what if, what if next year all summer long, everyone's been going, we're sitting here in, in, in late August and the Sacramento A's baby, the Sacramento A's are sitting at 56 and 75. They've won five of their last ten. They're yeah. splitting it. Hey, they only won fifty last year. Huh? They only won. They only 50 won fifty. Yeah, they'll be. They're better this year. Uh huh. Sort of. Yeah. And then I mean, they might get to seventy wins. And then who are they? Who are they? Are they keeping people? Are they yeah. spending any yes. extra money? Are they doing anything on the field to make this team more exciting? Right. Or are they doing less because they can? There's less money to go around as far as the the uh, uh, the TV deal uh, reportedly. Uh, less money to go around as far as revenue, you would think. Yeah, because generally, general rule of thumb when you're moving locations is we need someone to some sizzle. We want Sacramento to feel good about this. Right. We want Vegas to now feel good about this team. Yeah. We're dealing with John Fisher. And that's the thing. Yeah, I didn't even think about that. Vegas watching the A's in Sacramento and just being like, ugh. This is what we're getting. Yeah. While you're watching this $1.5 billion ballpark you paid for go up. It's like, hmm. yeah. yes, this is super better than an expansion team without John Fisher attached right. to it and no history whatsoever that we can make our own and our own colors and our own name and our own owner that's like dynamic and like wants to win and has a ton of cash. No, let's take the biggest joke franchise literally in American sports with the biggest joke owner literally in all of American sports. Let's bring him down to Vegas. I don't think it's fair on the A's the biggest show in American sports. Who's bigger? I would say it's probably close between them and the San Jose Earthquakes. <laughs> I mean, like sports that matter. Chris, come on. <laughs> San Jose Earthquakes. What do they both have in common? I don't know. Uh, they're both in the Bay Area, right? And owned by? Oh, damn it, John Fisher. <laughs> yeah. He's not good at that. Stick to Old Navy, dude. In the gaps stick to saving the giants in san francisco there you go that was good yeah we'll take a break we'll if he break. stopped there everyone would love him what a what a different world that'd be you'd be a billionaire that everybody loved except chris when we come back three for madness
There are no good billionaires. The U.S. Open starts this week. This is a Jason-centric segment. He is our tennis expert. We'll get to that. 